Today, I'm going to show you everything you'll ever need to know about profitable CS2 trade-ups. This video will include everything from how to easily get low float skins to how to create your own profitable trade-ups. And at the end of the video, I'll even show you a step-by-step -step walkthrough to ensure you understand everything completely. By the way, I'm giving away this Bowie knife freehand when we hit 30,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to enter for a chance to win, check out the community post. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also, make sure to stick around and watch the whole video to find out what this week's giveaway is and the instructions to enter. Before I get into it, today's sponsor GamerPay wants to sponsor you with a free five euros on your first 50 euro deposit. GamerPay is an extremely trustworthy peer-to-peer -peer skin trading website where you can find some of the cheapest CS2 skins on the market. Take a look at this MAC-10 fade for example. Currently the cheapest one is on GamerPay. GamerPay has no buying fee and only a small 3% selling fee and you can even sell your skins on a trade lock. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to claim your free 5 euros today. Before I begin, let me be very clear about something. This is not an easy process by any means. My videos glorify the trade-ups to make them more entertaining, but I never show the time and effort that goes on behind the scenes. You can't just expect free money to be easy to come by, but if you're patient and dedicated, you can make a lot of money. Now then, if you're still watching, strap in and fasten your seatbelts because we're about to go on a trade-up journey. Let's start at the beginning. Way back on August 14th, 2013, Valve released an update to CSGO called the Arms Deal Update, which added skins for the first time in Counter-Strike's history. Put simply, skins are virtual images overlaid on in-game items to make them look different. But if you're watching this, chances are you already know that. What I'm actually here to explain to you is all of the different classifications of skins and how they relate to trade-ups. There are five main classifications that affect trade-ups. Those are category, quality, collection, wear, and pattern. At the most basic level, in order to do a trade-up, you must input 10 skins of the same exact rarity, and once the trade-up is executed, you get back one skin of the superior rarity. In order to understand what I mean by the same exact rarity, let me break it down. The two classifications that make up a skin's rarity are category and quality. Every CS2 skin has a category and a quality. There are three categories, normal, stat track, and souvenir. Souvenir skins cannot be traded up. This is why you'll sometimes see lower rarity souvenir skins cost less than their normal counterparts. Both normal and stat track skins on the other hand can be traded up. Next we have quality. There are seven main skin qualities. Consumer grade, industrial grade, mil spec, restricted, classified, covert, and exceedingly rare. Also referred to as gray, light blue, blue, purple, pink, red, and gold, respectively. The gold rarity is reserved for knives and gloves, which cannot be traded up. Also, you sadly can't trade up red skins to get a gold. That leaves us with five. Of those five, two of them being the gray and the light blue rarities are only found as collection skins. Blue, purple, and pink on the other hand are found in both cases and collections. It's important to note that stat track skins can only be found in cases and not in collections. This means that neither stat track grays nor stat track light blues exist. Before I continue, let's make sure you're following. If I input 10 normal blue skins into a trade up, what will I get back? If you said one normal purple skin, you'd be correct. What if I put in 10 stat track purple skins? That's right, you'd get back one stat track pink skin. Now, what if I did 10 souvenir light blues? That one was a trick question. Remember, you can't trade up souvenir skins. All right, you get the idea. Now that you have that down, let's move on to collections. If you're new to CS2, this might seem difficult to follow, but the more you play, the easier it will be to understand. At the time of this recording, there are 37 collections and 40 cases in the game. The confusing thing about collections is, cases are oftentimes also referred to as collections with the term being used interchangeably. This is why if you're searching for items with a specific case on the Steam market, you'll have to do so by using the collection dropdown. But just because you hear the clutch case for example be referred to as the clutch collection does not mean that the clutch case now magically has gray or light blue rarities. Most of the time if people refer to these separately they either call them case collections or map collections but you can also use the umbrella term collection to refer to them both. Now then oppositely from before when you were forced to use 10 items of the same rarity for a trade-up with collections you may choose to use any of them in any combination. You can use 10 items from up to 10 different collections if you so please but this greatly affects the outcome of 
the trade up. Let me use an example to further explain. If I trade up 10 normal purple skins, all from the Kilowatt case, there is a 100% chance that I'll get a normal pink skin from the Kilowatt case in return. And since there are three pink skins in the Kilowatt case, this means that I'll have a 33.33% chance to get any of those three skins from this trade up. Now, what if I use one normal purple skin from these 10 different cases? Instead of three possible outcomes, there are now 30, each with a 3.33% chance of occurring. But why does this happen? What's the math behind it? Let's look at a visual example. For this trade up example, I'll be using nine blue skins from the safe house collection and one blue skin from the chop shop collection. It's important to note that the chop shop collection has two purple skins and the safe house collection only has one. This means that there are three total skins that are potential outcomes. But sadly, the math isn't that simple. To calculate the actual total of numbers the game considers, we must do chop shop inputs, which is one, multiplied by chop shop outputs, which is two, and add that number to safe house inputs, which is nine, multiplied by safe house outputs, which is one, leaving us with two plus nine, which is 11. In the game's mind, there are 11 total outcomes for this trade up with each input adding its own set of outcomes. Now to find the probability of a chop shop output, we simply divide the total number of chop shop outputs, which we just found is two, and divide it from the total number of possible outputs, which we just found is 11, meaning there is a two in 11 chance or an 18.18% chance of a chop shop output from this trade up. This also means there is a nine in 11 chance or an 81.81% chance of getting a safe house output. Oh, and if you wanted to find the percent chance of a specific chop shop output, simply divide the percent chance to get any chop shop output by the number of possible chop shop outputs. So in this example, each of the chop shop outputs have a 9.09% .09 chance to occur. Trust me, I know this can definitely be confusing, but luckily there are plenty of online trade up calculators that'll do this math for you. And I'll show you some of those later. But this does make for some very interesting opportunities like with the Glock Gamma Doppler from the 2021 train collection. Since the Gamma Doppler has five phases, including the Emerald, the game considers each phase as its own output, meaning that with the coalition included, there are technically six red outputs in the collection, which greatly skews your odds toward it while doing trade ups. Before I get into the explanation of floats, let me quickly touch on patterns. In CS2, there are two different types of skins, still pattern skins and dynamic pattern skins. Each of these skins have 1000 different patterns ranging from pattern zero to pattern 999. These are also referred to as pattern IDs or pattern templates. Still pattern skins are skins that look the same no matter what pattern ID they have. Every pattern number from zero to 999 will look the exact same. Dynamic pattern skins on the other hand all look different from one another. The most famous example of this is with the case hardened skin as each pattern contains a different amount of blue and gold. While using skins as inputs for trade ups, their pattern number plays no part in determining the pattern of the outcome skin. But doing trade ups actually introduces the addition of a new pattern number as an outcome. Pattern template 1000. This means that instead of having a 1 in 1000 chance of any pattern from a trade up, you now have a 1 in 1001 chance. This creates some interesting phenomena, especially for discontinued skins like the M4A4 Howl. Since you can no longer trade up for this skin, there will forever only be two Howls with pattern ID 1000. Next, and quite possibly the thing that affects the outcomes of a trade up most, is the exterior, also known as the wear or float. Whenever a CS2 skin is created, whether that's from a case, drop, or a trade up, it's assigned a wear with an accompanying float value. The float of a weapon falls on a spectrum from 0.00 to 1.00, and on that spectrum there are five wares. The five wares are factory new, minimal wear, field tested, well worn, and battle scarred, and here are their float ranges. Once a skin has a wear, it keeps this wear and float forever. A common misconception is that skins become more worn from using them in game, but this is not true. When doing a trade up, the average float of the 10 input skins is used to determine what float the outcome will have. Just to make sure I'm covering all of my bases here, the input average is found by adding the float of all 10 input skins together and dividing by 10. So let's say I have 10 skins with an exact 0.2 float. Obviously, the average float here will be exactly 0.2. So that means the outcome skin should come out and field tested with a 0.2 float as well, right? Sometimes. See, the thing is, that's only true for outcome skins that have no float cap, meaning their wear can fall anywhere on a spectrum from 0.00 to 1.00. But not all skins have an uncapped float. On top of skins with no float cap, there are also skins with a minimum float cap, skins with a maximum float cap, and skins that are float capped on both extremes. Each of these different groups have their own calculations as to what float they will come in from a trade up. Luckily, the skins with just a minimum float cap are calculated the exact same way as skins with a float cap on both ends 
ends, so there are only three groups of calculations I need to show you. Let's start with the most straightforward example, which are skins with no float cap. In order to find out what the outcome float will be for this AK-47 slate, you simply divide the maximum float for a given wear by the skin's maximum float cap. The maximum float for factory new is obviously 0.07, so if you want to ensure that the slate will come in factory new, you simply divide 0.07 by 1, since the maximum float cap for the slate is the entire range of 0 to 1. This of course gets you 0.07, meaning that as long as you keep the average float of the 10 skins below 0.07 while doing a trade up, if you hit the slate, it will come out in factory new. Next up, let's take a look at skins that just have a maximum float cap. We can use this AK-47 Inheritance as an example. This skin has a float range of 0.00 to 0.80. So again, if we'd like this outcome to come in factory new, we do 0.07 divided by 0.80, which gets us 0.0875. Meaning to get a factory new AK Inheritance, we'd need the average float of our 10 input skins to be below 0.0875. Lastly, in the most confusing are skins with float caps on both sides. The calculation for these requires an extra step. Let's use the AK-47 Awesome Ob as an example. This skin has a float range of 0.05 to 0.70. First, let's subtract the minimum float cap for the skin from the maximum float cap for a given wear condition. Let's again use factory new. So the equation is 0.07 minus 0.05, which equals 0.02. Next, let's subtract the skin's minimum float cap from its maximum float cap. So for the AK Awesomeov, that would be 0.70 minus 0.05, which equals 0.65. Now we simply divide the first number by the second number, which gets us the average float we must stay under to get a factory new AK Awesomeov, which in this case is roughly 0.0307. That's it. Trust me, I know you guys are here to make money from trade-ups and not get caught up in the math behind the scenes. Luckily, all of this math is done for you instantaneously if you use an online trade-up calculator. So let me introduce you. There are plenty of online trade-up calculators out there, but the one that I always use in my videos and that I have the most experience with is Trade-Up Spy. Trade-Up Spy is a great resource for many reasons. There are a bunch of different useful tabs, so I recommend you check out the website yourself. I'll leave a link in the description. But today, I'll be focusing on the Calculator tab. Once you're on the Calculator tab, you'll see a few different options at the top. The top option has to do with manual entry of outcome prices, so I'd leave that alone for now. The Stat Track option is obviously used when you'd like to search for Stat Track inputs. The Rarity dropdown is used to select the color rarity of the skins you'd like to trade up, and the fees applied allows you to choose between seeing outcome prices calculated with steam fees, with no fees, or with both. I always leave this on both just so I see the full extent of the information. Now then, in order to further explain the intricacies of the trade up calculator, let's use one of my favorite classified to covert trade ups as an example. This trade up calls for 10 stat track minimal wear classified skins from the horizon case below a 0.0875 average float. Let's start by checking off the stat track box and selecting classified from the rarity drop down. Then scroll down and click the big green plus icon. This is where we insert the inputs. Once you click the plus, there are a few options. The far left option allows you to search for specific skins. The center option allows you to look at skins from a specific collection, and the far right option lets you choose the wear. For this trade up, I'll set the collection to horizon and the condition to minimal wear. Now I'll simply select the cheapest option. Once you click it, there's the option to change the float as well as the price. The default price shown is known as the current API price. This is the average sale price of every skin of this kind on Steam in the last 24 hours. Sometimes this price can be inaccurate, so make sure to double check it. I'll further explain exactly how to do that later when I show you how to create your own profitable trade-ups. Next, we can change the float to 0.0875. Before I move forward, let me show you something. At the top right of the skin, there are four options. The eye is for info and will take you to a different page which shows you more information about the skin. It'll show you things like its float cap and what collection it's a part of. More important though are the next three options. The pencil and paper allows you to edit the skin's float value and price again, and the arrow is a copy button. Each time you click this, it will add a copy of the skin with the already specified criteria to the inputs. Finally is the X, which simply deletes the skin from the trade-up. Now then, simply click the copy button 9 times. This will fill out the trade-up and give you more information. Once you do that, scroll down to the outcome section, where there's a lot more to take in. We can see the average float of the 10 input skins the trade-up cost, and the overall profitability of the trade-up. As I said before, since I left the fees applied drop-down untouched, this shows the profitability with Steam sale fees applied if you were to sell the outcome on the Steam market, as well as the profitability if you were to sell it on a market with no sale fee. The next box shows you the average profit or loss per trade-up, and the last box shows you the odds to profit each time you do one of these trade-ups. As of right now, this trade-up has a 146.75% profitability if you sell the outcomes on the Steam market, which means on average you'll profit 46 
6.75%. Generally, anything above 100% profitability is good. Obviously though, the higher the better. This trade up also generates about $70 profit per trade up on average with a 50% chance to profit each time you do it. If we look at the outcomes down here, you can see what float the outcome skins would come in and how much each of them are currently selling for on the Steam market. Below that are the profit and loss amounts for selling the item with no fee or selling it on the Steam market. And next to that is the percent chance to get that item from the trade up. Before moving on, there are a couple more things I'd like to know. Firstly, I know a lot of people are confused by my trade up videos and why I don't subtract the price of the inputs before doing the trade up. This is because that number is factored into the overall profit and loss of the outcome item after it's sold. That's why down here, the profit amount after selling the AK Neon Rider is so little, because on top of the Steam sale fee, it is also subtracting the cost of the trade up. Secondly, when it comes to any trade up, once you know what average float you must stay under in order to get outcomes of a lower wear, that number will never change. The only thing that changes over time are the prices of the skins, which adversely affects the profitability as well. Now that you completely understand skins, floats, and how to read and use a trade-up calculator, let me show you how to find and create your own profitable trade-ups. When it comes to finding and creating your own profitable trade-ups, it's not always going to be easy. The more you play the game and the more you do trade-ups and acquire skin knowledge and collection knowledge, the easier it'll become. There are an incomprehensible amount of possible trade-ups in the game, so there's no easy way to just check them all. Some very key rules that I've learned in all of my time doing trade-ups though, is that the most profitable trade-ups come from receiving outcome skins of a lower wear condition than the input items. What I mean is, for example, putting in 10 field-tested inputs of a low enough average flow for the outcomes to be minimal wear. But it's not always that cut and dry, and it also isn't always profitable. I've also noticed that for the most part, the real money is in field tested to minimal wear and minimal wear to factory new trade ups, as well as their stat track counterparts. There are very few profitable trade ups whilst going from battle scar to well worn or well worn to field tested. You must also understand that there are 10 input item slots giving you the opportunity to have 10 different collection outcomes in your trade up. Figuring out ways to manipulate these variables to find profitable trade ups is the name of the game and something you will literally never be able to master. Even I, who have been doing this for almost a year straight, only have a limited knowledge on this. Another helpful hint I've picked up is that most profitable trade-ups have a two collection maximum. The most common setups for profitable trade-ups are 10 inputs from the same collection, 9 inputs from one collection, and 1 input from another, 8 inputs from one, and two from another, seven inputs from one and three from another, six from one and four from another, and five from one and five from another. It's pretty rare to see anything other than that. Now then, let me show you a common practice I use to find profitable trade-ups. I have a series on this channel called Profitable Trade-Ups from every CS2 case where I find and show the most profitable trade-ups for each rarity from a specific case. Let me show you exactly how I go about finding those trade-ups. For this example, let's use the clutch case. As I said earlier, something cool about this that can also be pretty daunting if you're new to it is that there's pretty much an infinite number of trade-up possibilities if you don't know where to start. But luckily today, I know I'm gonna use the clutch case. So for cases, as we already spoke about a bit earlier, there's only three options for possible rarities. You can go from blue to purple, purple to pink, and pink to red. So to find the most profitable trade-ups for each rarity, I would just start with mail spec. As you can see up here, I'm gonna leave stat track unchecked and make sure it's on mail spec, and then click the plus. From here, we can just search for the clutch collection, and then set it to field tested. I know I mentioned this earlier, but there's pretty much no money in battle scar to well worn and well worn to field tested trade ups, so we'll just leave those alone. Once we set it to field tested, you can see the seven inputs right here, all at different prices. What I usually do is just select the cheapest one and set it to a moderate float to start. Add the skin and then copy nine more of them in. From here, just scroll down and take a look at the trade up. Right now, it's obviously not profitable at all, but at a quick glance, I can see that two of these skins are actually very close to the 0.15 threshold of getting to minimal wear. So what I would do in this case is, from my built up trade up knowledge, I think this might work out if I set the floats to 0.1875. I'll just scroll up here, delete all of these, set it to 0.1875, and copy them all back in. Now looking down here, this is right at that 0.15 threshold and we're barely above it. So to get there, just set this 0.1875 to 18749 as any skin that you're looking at below 1875 isn't gonna be exactly 1875 anyway. It will be 18749 or below. Save the changes. And now this is way more profitable. 
We're still not quite there. It's not a great trade up by any means. You're still going to be losing money on the Steam market, but we did get those skins below that 0.115 threshold. The only way to make this trade up slightly better would be to get this Swag 7 below 0.15, but it's just not feasible to do that as 0.1875 is already pushing the boundary of a low field tested float. One option that you do have though is deleting a couple of these field tested inputs and trying out with some minimal wares to see if that would make it more profitable with the Swag 7 below 0.15. I would say three is a good starting point set it to minimal wear go cheapest one go 0.09 because that's a pretty moderate fair number and see what it looks like way less profitable we did get it below 0.15 but it's just not going to work out so now that we're back on here and we tried it out once we can just avoid going through that process every time but since we know this is for sure not profitable we can just move on the next step would be to check the stat track version and luckily for us this float will never change so let's delete all 10 of these Set it to stat track, go back in, field tested, select the cheapest one, 0.1875, copy them all in, scroll down, set this one to 0.18749, and voila, we have found a profitable trade up. But let's not get our hopes up yet. If you recall, I did say that the API price is not always accurate. So the next step, once you were to find a profitable trade up would be to go on the Steam market and make sure the inputs are actually gonna be that cheap. From the Steam website, hover over community, click market, set it to CS2, show advanced options, clutch case, field tested, stat track, mill spec, search. And if this ever happens to you, it's not due to fault of your own. You're not searching incorrectly. The Steam market just sucks. Just refresh the page a couple times. I know, super annoying. I don't know why this happens. Thanks, Valve. Boom, now that it's loaded, we can see a few things. If you remember that trade up that we were just looking at, we had set the input prices to 11 cents. Right here, obviously, none of these are at 11 cents, but that's okay, because we're not gonna base it on this number anyway. What I would do from here is open a tab for every one of these inputs, and from there, take a look at them one by one, checking their highest buy order price. So this one's 12 cents, 13 cents, 10 cents, 11 cents, 12 cents, 11 cents, and 11 cents. So I think it's pretty fair to assume that if we sent 11 cent buy orders on a couple of these skins, we would be able to get some inputs. So in this case on Trade Up Spy, the API price was accurate and this is the profitability of the trade up. But we're not done here. Next, we should test the minimal wear to factory new version. Delete these 10 inputs, set it back to normal non-stat track, hit the plus, go into minimal wear, select the cheapest one. I'd say a moderate number to set the float at here would be 0.09 to start. Copy nine more in and take a look. Not quite profitable, but again, at quick glance, you can see that two of these skins are very close to that 0.07 factory new threshold. So what I think is if we set this 0.09 to 0.0875, I think it'll drop that 0.072 just below the 0.07 mark we're hoping for. Save the changes, copy nine more, and voila. 113% profitable. It's slightly more profitable than the last trade up, but again, we would want to double check these input prices. This time around, it's minimal wear, normal mill specs, search, open up a tab for each of these, and check their buy orders one by one. 12 cents, 11 cents, 11 cents, 11 cents, 11 cents, 10 cents, and 10 cents. So if we're willing to wait, I do actually think it's fair to say that 10 cents is the input price, but we still have one more to check. Remember this float again, delete them all, that is a stat track, minimal wear, cheapest one, 0 0.0875, boom. Set that all in and slightly better than that 113% profitability of the last one. Of course, we can't take this at face value yet. We have to check the input price one more time. Minimal wear, stat track this time, mil spec search, open a tab for each. This time around, we can see that the buy orders are at 28, 30, 27, 32, 27, 29, and 27. So back in here, I actually think it's fair to change this input price down to 27 cents, making this even more profitable than we had originally expected. 
Of course, it's always very important to remember that every single input you get from a buy order isn't gonna have a usable float of in this case 0.0875 or less, but I'll touch on exactly how to do the math to make sure your trade-ups are still profitable later in this video. Now that you know how to do this, you could repeat this process with restricted to classified and classified to covert trade-ups as well. It's not always going to be this straightforward and simple. You're gonna have to sometimes mix and match collections as well as mix and match wares to get your float threshold below a certain average, but you get the idea. If you're trying and having a hard time doing it on your own, there are a few other resources that can help. The first and most obvious is YouTube. Simply watching other trade-up YouTubers, you'll be able to find hundreds of profitable trade-ups. Even if you go back six months or even two years, the likelihood that you'll find a profitable trade-up is high. Take a look at this video of mine from eight months ago. You can see this simple milspec to restricted revolution case trade up with an average float of below 0.1875. As you can see, it has a very large 137% profitability. Now, if you head over to Trade Up Spy, make sure Stat Tracks unchecked and set it to milspec. Go in here, set the collection to revolution, field tested, select the cheapest one below 0.1875, add the skin, copy nine more, change this to 0.18749. And boom, it's still almost 137% profitable to this day. But if you've learned anything, you can't just take this API price at face value. So to make sure that's right, we got to go to the Steam Market, TS, Advanced Options, this time Revolution Collection, Field Tested, Normal, Mil Spec, Search, open a tab for each one, and just check the buy order prices one by one. Seven cents, seven, seven, seven seven, eight, and seven. But as you can see, there are actually over 20,000 current buy orders set at seven cents. So it might take a long time, but you can safely assume you can get these for seven cents. So back in Trade Up Spy, delete those, reset the price to seven instead of six, copy those back in, check where we're at. Still 117% profitability. So if you're ever struggling to create your own trade-ups, just simply go check out videos. It's a great resource. On top of this, the Trade Up Spy website actually has one other really great resource. If you scroll up to the top of the page and you click Trade Ups, for me, it's a little different because I actually have a premium account. But for you guys without premium, you'll actually have three free trade-ups always here that you can look at. To look at it, just click Inspect and it will take you to it and show you exactly what you need to create it. Sometimes because these are public trade-ups, the prices will be a little different, which is why you'll see this caution mark by the time you look at it. So always double check the input prices, which I just taught you how to do. But yeah, it's a super great option. Also, if you buy premium, which I think you can get a lifetime membership for like 30 bucks, you'll always have five more premium trade-ups to look at, which less people have access to. Realistically, you could probably make the money back that it took you to buy premium quite quickly with these trade-ups. Yeah, you definitely don't need this, but if you're interested at all, just click the affiliate link I have in the description below. Like I've said, there is really no simple formula to find your own profitable trade-ups, but here are my five main pieces of advice. Familiarize yourself with cases, collections, and floats. Websites like CSGO Stash and CSGO Skins.gg are great resources for that. This will also just happen naturally. Remember that most profitable trade-ups have a two collection maximum and usually come in the combinations that I mentioned earlier. Primarily search for trade-ups going from field tested to minimal wear and minimal wear to factory new. Also remember their stat track counterparts are oftentimes more profitable, but the input skins are harder to get. Double check input prices because the API price is not always accurate. Use buy order price as a baseline. Start to memorize common average floats for inputs that ensure the next best wear outcomes. Some common ones are 0.1875, and 0.2 for field tested to minimal wear, as well as 0.07 and 0.0875 for minimal wear to factory new. Now you guys have all of the tools you need to start finding and even creating your own profitable trade-ups. Before I show you exactly how to get low float skins for trade-ups and how to sell trade-up outcomes for the most profit, let me show you some necessary extensions. First of all, if you don't already, start using Google Chrome. Google Chrome allows you to install awesome extensions that will make your life much easier, especially while trading up. Also, outside of trade-ups, everyone knows Google Chrome is the best browser. Secondly, if you've ever spent any time on the Steam market through the Steam application, you know it stinks. It takes ages to load and oftentimes has errors for no reason. Accessing the Steam market from your browser will make your life much easier. So just start doing that from now on. Now then, the first Chrome extension you should download is CS Float Market 
Market Checker. CS Float Market Checker essentially allows you to view the float of your skins at a quick glance, which isn't possible by normal means. This is what it looks like when you're trying to purchase skins without the extension, and this is what it looks like with it. On top of seeing the floats, you can also search by float and make each page show up to 100 items instead of the default 10. It also makes it so you can easily see the floats of the items in your inventory. Next up is the CS2 Trader extension. Once downloaded, if you're purchasing an item, rather than just having the normal buy now button, there is now the option to instant buy, which essentially skips the agree to terms of service page, making your life way easier if you're trying to snipe skins as quickly as possible. It also adds new buy order options at the top of the page that make it so you can place them way quicker. The first is place highest order, which will set a buy order one cent above the current highest price, and you can set the quantity of that to the right. And the next is quick place order, which will set a buy order at the price and quantity you have typed into the nearby boxes. Also, back on your inventory page, you can now see the total value of your inventory, and it also allows you to see the colored rarity of your items at a quick glance. You can also see the steam price of each item individually. Those features are cool and all, but the main feature we care about when it comes to trade-ups is the quick sale feature. This allows you to select any number of items shown in your inventory and list them all at separate prices with speed. I'll show you why this is helpful later. The last extension you'll need is the Trade Ups by Inventory extension. Ever since the 10 day hidden item update, this will be necessary for ensuring you have low enough float skins for your trade ups, which I'll show you how to do later. Before I show you the easiest way to buy the inputs for these trade ups, here's this week's giveaway. All right, boys, this week I'm giving away a field tested AK 47 Leap Museo. To enter, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment letting me know what videos you want to see from me in the future. Also, just make sure to have your Steam trade link in your YouTube bio so I can send you the skin when you win. But make sure you don't skip a step or else you won't be entered. Now, let me show you the three best ways to buy low float trade up inputs. When it comes to profitable trade-ups, buying skins with the correct floats at a low price is easily the biggest hurdle. Usually when you do find skins with low enough floats, the items are listed for overpay which ends up making the trade-up not profitable. Luckily, there are three main ways you can get low floats at or below market price and I'm going to show you them from least to most practical. But before I show you those, one great way to get low floats and even free skins is on SkinsMonkey. SkinsMonkey is an automated trading bot site that allows you to quickly and easily exchange your skins at a fair price. Simply log in through Steam, add your trade URL, and you're good to go. And if you use my code, you'll actually get two bonuses on the site. You'll get up to $5 completely for free on your first trade, and you'll also have a permanent 35% deposit bonus anytime you add balance on the site. Best of all, under the freebies tab, SkinsMonkey is always running daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways, so even if you don't have any skins, SkinsMonkey is the website for you. So if you'd like to check them out, the link is in the description below. Let's start with third-party marketplaces. The first option and the least effective in my experience are buying items from third-party marketplaces. On third-party marketplaces like Buff163, you can search for certain float ranges directly. The problem with doing this is, most of the time, sellers are aware of the float rarity and will list these items for overpay. If we take a look at StatTrack Minimalware Sawed Off Devourers from our Horizon example earlier, you can see that their market value on Buff is around $12. But as soon as we change the float range to only see ones below .0875, they're all listed for over $21. This completely ruins the trade up and makes it no longer profitable. It's important to note that on Buff and some other marketplaces, you're actually able to set buy orders with specific float caps. You can certainly do this and hope for the best, but this will not provide you with the quick results you desire. My best piece of advice if you plan to use third party marketplaces is to use more niche ones where people listing the items probably don't know as much about float overpay. It is always possible, even on Buff, to snipe the occasional low float skin that was unknowingly listed at market value. The next method is sniping skins on the Steam market. Sniping skins on Steam is another option similar to trying to snipe skins on third-party marketplaces, but the functionality is a bit different. If we take a look at the StatTrack Minimalware Devourers again, utilizing the CS Float Market Checker extension from earlier, if you sort by float, you can see that there are none low enough that would work for the trade-up. Even if there were, they would likely be listed at above market value. Now, if you take a look at the lowest listing in general, it is currently $15.11. And if you take a look at the highest buy order price, it is currently $14.23. Anytime a StatTrack Minimalware Devourer is listed at $14.23 or less, it will instantly be sent over to a user with a buy order in place. But since there is no one with a buy order above that number, any Devourer listed at $14.24 or above will simply be up for grabs. Sniping is the process of being on the page when items like that are listed and buying them before anyone else does. This is a very tedious process and it requires you to constantly be monitoring and refreshing these purchase pages. Keep in mind, 
these items are usually bought very quickly and lots of the time depending on the popularity of the trade up people even have bots that will automatically purchase these skins when they're listed but if you have a bit of luck on your side this is possible lastly and in my experience the most efficient method for finding low float skins is with steam buy orders buy orders are orders for items below market value that are automatically executed when a seller lists their item below that price looking again at the devourers anytime one is listed for below $14.23 the person with the oldest buy order with a high enough order price will receive the item in the case of the stat track minimal wear devourer since it's an item that isn't very liquid I'd probably set the buy order at $14.23 before doing this though it's always safest to do some math on trade ups by first if we take a look at this trade up and we set the price of each input to $14.23 you can see that the profitability is an insane 153 percent but this is assuming that every single item that comes in is going to be below the correct float that will never happen in my experience doing buy orders usually anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of the items that come in have usable floats just to be safe in our calculations let's assume that only 20 percent of the devourers we get have below a 0 0.0875 float this means that we'd need 50 orders to execute to get 10 usable ones so what would you do with the bad ones? You need to sell them back at just under market value. Like we saw before, the current lowest listing for this skin is $15.11. So let's assume we sell back the bad floats each at $15.10. After steam fees, that leaves us with $13.14. And since we paid $14.23, that means we lose $1.09 per bad float. So after all 40 bad floats, we will have spent an extra $43.60. So back on trade up spy, if we add $43.60 to the price of one of these inputs, that will give us a more accurate estimate as to the true profitability of this trade up. In the case of this trade up, it's still highly profitable, but that won't always be the case, so make sure you're always checking the math yourself. I want to take this time to answer a few common questions I've had about buy orders. Firstly, there is no formula for how long a buy order will take to fulfill. In the case of something like this one, it is a pink skin, so it isn't that liquid, and it's also stat track, so it's even more rare. This could take some time. For more liquid skins, like like blues from the new kilowatt case for example, which I'll use in our walkthrough later, these come in at a very rapid pace. On the same note, there is also no formula for what percent of the buy order skins will come with usable floats. This is completely luck of the draw. One issue with buy orders of skins from popular trade ups is that many other users are also looking to unload the bad floats they get. So if you have a buy order set for a large quantity of items, you could get a load of bad floats all at once from one person, completely screwing you. One way around this is to set buy orders of smaller amounts between two and 10 skins, so this is less likely to happen. Doing this though will make the process take longer, but might save you money in the end. If you're doing this for a trade up with a large quantity of buy orders, it's smart to set these groups of buy orders every few hours or so to have multiple spots in line, so to speak. When it comes to selling outputs in bad floats, you technically have a lot of options to explore. I'm sure most of you have thought about selling your items on third party marketplaces, but for all intents and purposes, it really isn't beneficial. Firstly, the items take a whole week to become tradable to allow you to sell on other marketplaces. On top of this, the items are usually about 30% cheaper on them. There's also almost always a sale fee between 2 and 15%. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't Steam have a big sale fee? Yes, they do, but it's also only 15% and you're getting up to a 30% markup on your items. Plus, you don't have to wait an entire week to continue the trade-up process. I personally recommend doing all selling directly on the Steam market until you're ready to completely cash out your profits. The one drawback to the Steam market is the pesky pending balance. Sometimes when you sell your items on the Steam market, you'll encounter a pending balance. This is a wait period set by Valve while they verify the funds from the buyer. In my experience, this can take anywhere from 12 to 48 hours to settle, but this is by no means as bad as waiting a whole week to sell your items at a loss somewhere else. Sadly, you're just going to have to put up with it. In terms of pricing, I recommend listing the items at equal to or one cent below the current market value depending on how liquid the skin is. If it's super liquid like a normal restricted skin from a popular case, then list it at the same price as the current lowest listing and adjust accordingly if it doesn't sell. If it's less liquid like the Stat Trek Devourer we've been looking at, list it at one cent below so it's more likely to be the first to sell. The last thing I'll say about selling is that when you're ready to cash out your skins to a third-party marketplace to receive actual profits 
in dollars, remember that most items are around 20% cheaper on those websites. So make sure you've actually profited enough through Steam to make the cash out worthwhile or else you'll lose money. Also, try to find items that are historically closer in value between Steam and the marketplace you decide to sell on. For example, if you're selling on Buff, the Webstock sticker currently has the exact same price as it does on Steam, meaning you would retain much more value if you sold those on Buff than if you sell something like the factory new M4A1S Nitro, which currently costs 26% less on Buff than Steam. Before I show you the complete trade up walkthrough to make sure you understand how to put all of this into practice, I have one final important piece of knowledge to share. The last piece of important information I want to share regarding profitable trade-ups is chaining inputs. This is something I'm less experienced with and haven't done much of myself, but the overarching idea is negating the full cost of inputs by doing other trade-ups for them. Let me show you an example. You see this trade-up right here? Nothing too special, right? It's a subpar trade-up that isn't profitable whatsoever. Now, what if we started with this one instead? This trade-up has three profitable outcomes and two that give us a loss. But what if we kept those loss outputs instead of selling them? Let's go through the motions. Let's assume we start with a balance of $10 and do this trade up five times. On average, we would get one of each item. If we sold the Dragon Tech, Vent Rush, and Downtown, we'd be left with a balance of $11.06. But instead of selling the loss items, let's keep them since both are usable in the first trade up I showed you. But this means we have to subtract $2.40 more from our balance since that's two times the cost of each trade up, leaving us with $8.66 in the two skins. If we did this three more times, that would leave us with a balance of $4.64 and 8 usable skins. This means we can safely assume that each input costs us 67 cents. Now with our remaining $4.64, we just have to snipe two factory new danger zone restricted skins below a .035 average float for market price, leaving us with $1.72 in a complete trade up. Now if we go back to that first trade up but make the price of the recoil inputs 67 cents since that's what we actually got them for, we are now left with a very profitable trade up. On average, after completing these trade ups, we'd be left with a balance of $12.42 as opposed to $11.68 if we simply did the 20 mil spec trade ups and sold every outcome. But that's just the beginning. This trade up is so profitable that on average you're actually able to keep each sawed off kiss love for free. And once you collect 10 of those, you'd actually be able to do this free trade up with a wild infinite profitability, which is absolutely insane to look at and will net you over $40 of profit on average. All right, boys, now that you know everything I know about trade ups, let's put all of this new knowledge to the test. Let's go through this entire process from start to finish and see how much money we can make. All right, boys, at the time of this recording, the most recent case to come out was the Kilowatt case. And because of that, a ton of them are getting opened. And since that's the case, all of the items in it are super liquid right now. And obviously, since we're gonna be using buy orders for this walkthrough, I think it's safe to say that we should use a trade up with liquid inputs. And I do know that the field tested to minimal wear mil spec to restricted trade up in the Kilowatt case is pretty good. So let's do that one. I'll leave stat trick unchecked, make sure it's on mil spec, set the collection to Kilowatt, or to field test it, use the cheapest one, set it to 0.2, add the skin, copy nine more, and take a peek. All right, this is pretty profitable, 116% profitability, can't complain about that. At a quick glance though, we can see that these three skins all have uncapped floats because they'll be coming out in 0.2 float as well. So I think it's fair to say that it's gonna be nearly impossible to be able to get these in minimal wear condition. So we're mainly gonna to wanna to focus on these two. As you can see, there's actually quite a ways before that 0.15 threshold on these two skins. So what I'm gonna do here is actually raise those input floats so we have as much wiggle room as possible for the floats from the buy orders. If you didn't know what float you were looking for, it would be sort of a guess and check process, but I already know what it is for this trade up. So I'm just gonna delete these and set it to 0.2238 and copy these in and take a peek again just to make sure yeah as you can see it's the same profitability and this is just below that 0.15 threshold so this gets us as close as we can get while still keeping these two in the profit now our next step would be to make sure this api price is actually accurate so over in steam we'll select cs2 of course go advanced options set this one to kilowatt field tested normal mil spec search here are the inputs we'll open up a tab for each of them now let's check out their buy orders one by one. 12 cents, 12 cents, 12 cents, 12 cents, 13 cents, 13 cents, 13 cents. 
All right, so I think it is fair to assume that we can get quite a bit of these skins for 12 cents. But even though this is true, we're still gonna have to sell the bad floats off for market price. As of right now, the market price for the four skins with the 12 cent buy orders are either 14 or 15 cents. So I think it's fair for us to assume that we could sell back all the bad floats at 14 cents on average. So now if we go over to our inventory and just test sell an item and see how much we would make back after steam fees if we sold something for 14 cents, you can see that we'll receive 12 cents back which means that we'll be losing exactly zero cents per bad flow. So for this trade up, there's no more unnecessary math to see what the actual profitability would be. Now let's just close the tabs with the 13 cent buy orders and place our 12 cent buy orders on the other four. So I would just click place buy order at the price to 12 and the quantity to 100. Like I said before, just be careful setting buy orders of such high numbers because you definitely could get screwed by people unloading their bad floats. But I think it's all right for now. Let's just set these. Boom, boom, boom. And now we wait. All right, boys, it's been a few days and I've now gotten 247 of these inputs from the buy orders. I canceled the rest of them because I think this will be enough. Now, let me show you what to do next. All right, boys, now what you're gonna wanna do is set up trade up spy on the left side of your screen and your steam inventory on the right side so you could start sorting through these good and bad float skins. Shout out Tech Savvy Scientist for this tip, but if you make it so your trade up spy shows five skins per row, it'll look exactly like your inventory does on the right, making it way easier to sort through. Now, the next step, and why I told you you're gonna need the trade up spy inventory extension earlier, is to load your inventory on the trade up spy website. The way to do this is gonna be by clicking on the trade up spy extension and clicking refresh inventory. Once that loads, it should show all of your new skins on trade up spy when you refresh. Boom, there we go. Now just click load all missing floats and it will individually load all of their floats. And now you can start sorting. The goal here is gonna to be to find groups of 10 that obviously have below that 0.2238 average float. Once you've found 10 skins that get you as close to that 0.2238 threshold as possible, you're gonna to wanna to open the CS2 Trader selection tool and then find them one by one and select them. Now, once you have all 10 selected, you're gonna to wanna to list them at the same price for the sake of organization. In my case, I think it's safe to do $1 per item, but if you're doing this for skins that have a market value of way higher and this is gonna obviously insta-sell them, don't don't do it. For example, if your skins are $14 each, like that devourer from earlier, maybe start listing them at around $16, $17. But yeah, in this case, it's safe to do $1 and then I'll list the items. Now you're gonna wanna rinse and repeat this process while raising the list price by a dollar every time. So when I find 10 more, I'm gonna wanna list those 10 at $2 each and then three and four and so on until I'm out of usable floats for trade-ups. Now, let me quickly do that. All right, boys, after just over an hour of sorting, I was finally able to squeeze out the last one. We actually got 16 of them, which is crazy. That means 160 out of our 247 inputs were viable, which is 64.77%. By the way, that does not mean that 64.7% of them were under 0.2238. I just made different combinations of them that added up to less than 0.2238. There was a ton of them below like 0.17, so I was able to sort of balance it out with the higher ones. Now what I'm gonna do is reload this page, select the remaining ones that weren't usable, and I'm gonna list them all for 14 cents. So they end up selling and we lose zero dollars on every bad float. Now once that's done, head over to the market tab and start removing each set of 10 one by one. So I'll select the original 10 that we listed at $1 and remove them all and then do it again for the $2 ones and so on and so forth until they're all back in your inventory sorted neatly. Now, once they're all removed and you only have the 14 cent ones listed, refresh your inventory through trade ups by one more time. Get the latest inventory from your extension. You're gonna have to probably fetch the floats again. Then you can just start double checking to make sure that every combination of 10 is actually below that 0.2238 float. Number one looks good. Number two looks good. And do that all the way down until you've checked them all just to make sure one final time. And now that we've done that, we can finally do some trade-ups. What a beautiful sight, 160 items locked and loaded. Let's spam these out and see how much money we can make. First one. Let's go, best option off the bat. Again, back to back. Okay, still in the profit. Bang. 
Boom! Back to back to back! Last one. What's it gonna be? All right, that was actually crazy. We got super lucky and got six block 18s. And after all was said and done, once everything sells, we will have profited $4.29. And if for some reason we can only sell the bad flow input skins from the buy orders for 13 cents instead of 14, we'll only lose one cent per bad flow, which means we still would have profited $3.42 total. Just remember in this case to sell the outputs at the same price as the current lowest listing for each, since these items are quite liquid. Everything should sell within a couple days making this whole process take around a week total but obviously this timeline will vary by trade up if you enjoyed this video youtube thinks you'll like this one too oh yeah and youtube told me 75 percent of you aren't subscribed yet so go thumb wrestle that subscribe button down below